Boom. Hey guys, what's up? Happy Friday. You know what time it is. It is Access Omaha time and uh, we've got a little bit of some in-depth discussion today um, about the myth about housing affordability crisis. And yeah. some of you might be sitting there saying, I don't even know what that means, but that's okay. <laughs> We're going to break it down we for are. you. We are. Um, so to, to kind of get us into this, for those of you that don't know, because uh, we don't typically do this often, but Levi, my man over here, is our preferred lender um, and works at Core Bank and obviously does mortgages. And so he's going to be speaking into this and how it relates to us on this side of the real estate side. Yep. Um, and then obviously you guys, as it relates to our market and the industry and what's going on. And we thought, why not spend some time today yeah. educating do and informing educating. our clientele about the stuff that we do. Right. You know, cause we're always having people on talking about what they do, let's but talk it's, about what we do. Let's take a break a and let's talk about the hot topic that everybody's talking yes, about right now. Real estate. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to move right into this with my boy Levi here. Um, so walk us through even the term housing affordability and how the media and everyone else has kind of put like this crisis or recession right. or all these other things intertwined with it. How does it relate to us? What does that even mean? Uh, walk us through those details. Yeah, yeah man, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a thick question there. But there's, first off, I'm, we won't talk about the recession much because I'm not even gonna begin to predict that I have any knowledge on whether or not that will or what? wouldn't happen. What? Um, but I can, here's what I can tell you, based on the current market in real estate, we're in a really awesome position for the housing market, at least for this foreseeable future. Um, and this is a hot topic when it comes to the media and news reporting and things like that. As we all know, there's a lot of fake hubbub out there and media thrives off of drama and creating drama. So don't pay attention too much, guys, to the information. But, um, you know, we do, have, we do have a really strong market right now for housing. Um, there's been some recent catalysts to that, which is the drastic decrease in interest rates over the last six, seven months. Um, which have been huge, yep. really made up for a really strong market. In addition to that, our economic numbers and GDP have been fantastic over these last three, four years. Um, we have median income up, um, we have cost of living, uh, staying relatively flat or the same. Um, so it's really creating a, a very robust real estate market. Uh, because there's a lot of people looking into purchasing though, there is low inventory. So that's where you kind of get this misnomer about, oh, we're in a housing crisis, there's not enough affordable housing out there. And where that may be true in some pockets around the, co the country, especially the really dense urban areas, yep. the big coastal cities, um, you know, they have more of a struggle than I think the, the majority of the populace of the United States. Um, all around though, by the numbers, we're seeing that with interest rates pushing down, even with the high demand um, for housing, we're still seeing affordabilities and purchasing power. Um, oh, there's that word. Yes, purchasing power. We're seeing you know people have really uh, strong purchasing power with rates going down, and also that aids in the affordability of the home too, because if you're paying much less in interest back to the bank, um, that's a, that allows you to save for other expenses, monthly expenses, utilities, you know, personal life expenses, things like that. So I'm going to back up here and kind of break down some of these terms that we use so often, but I think right. a lot of people might not quite understand. So GDP, uh -huh. we talked about that. Can you go into more detail about what does that mean? Gross domestic product. So that's the basically the gross revenue of any one particular country, right? So I don't know exactly, someone might be, might be willing to correct me in the comments down below, but I think at one point I heard that housing makes up about 40% of the United States GDP, roughly, give or take a bit, have a little bit of grace with me there. Gotcha. Um, so it's a big number though, guys, what, which, which even if it's 39 or 37% or whatever it is, it's still a very big number. Um, so yeah, it plays Perfect. a big role. Um, and then also talking about, so th this is something that I feel like I hear on a pretty consistent basis and 
almost the last like eight years in real estate hearing this um, from people is the low inventory, right? And so um, it's a seller's market, the low inventory. I'm not ever gonna find anything. Right. Um, and the truth is, although there may be a low inventory, it's also um, a great time to buy, yeah. right? Because yes, it's a great time to sell because of the low inventory and you're gonna get max for what you're, you're buying. And then a lot of times they say, well, it's not gonna benefit me anything because I'm gonna have to go out and do the same thing when I go to buy something. But that even though that is a little bit true, it's also true that you're, we're in historic lows as it pertains to the affordability mm -hmm. um, and also the interest rates. And so, yes, you may be paying a little bit more for that property, but you're also, what, in the last 20 years, we're seeing historic low numbers as far as where these rates have been and in, in contrast to what people have been making. So right. people have been making more money, mm -hmm. interest rates have been continuing to go down lower, and so therefore like it's a perfect time to buy. Yeah. And so um, maybe you can break down a little bit more when we talk about um, basically this affordability, you know, like what is that? I, I kind of hit on that a little bit, but is there any more you want to add to that as far as purchasing sure. power? Like we say that a lot. Yeah. What does that mean for a buyer? Like let's educate them a little bit on why now is a good time mm -hmm. um, to have that purchasing power and what does that actually mean and look like? Yeah. So that's a great question. So purchasing power, basically, it'll be a little bit individualistic, but essentially that's, hey, what will your income allow you to comfortably afford? And not only your mortgage, but how much of a house and a monthly payment would that be for you? Uh, so a lot of times when we work with a client who's starting the process, or maybe they purchased a home in the past and it's just been a while, we like to go through a pre-approval process which includes going through their purchasing power, their monthly budget goals, their down payment goals, their purchase price goals, all these things, and then trying to find a solution for them that really makes sense. To speak into what you said um, and touch on historic affordability, so I think right now, or as of June, the last reported numbers, um, in comparison to monthly income, we were seeing national average about 16.5% um, of total monthly income usage um, going towards the mortgage principal, principal and interest payment. To put that in context, the, the average over the last, what is it, 30, 40, 20, 30, 40 years, yeah. uh, has been 21.5%. So this, this myth that, oh, you know, home affordability is really not there, or is, you know, is this home affordability is a crisis is not really a, a factor at all because we're actually seeing that Homes are more affordable in comparison to income nowadays with the recent decreases in interest pricing. So it's allowing people to really get into a house, save a ton of money, even if you're paying a little bit more for that house than you would have last year or the year before, because your rate of interest and therein your compound interest that you pay over the life of the loan will be much less, it's still gonna net you more money. Amen to that. Yeah. So um, I wanted to read uh, a quote here as it kind of pertains to all this stuff. And it says, average nominal household incomes are nearly 57% higher today than in January of 2000. Record income levels combined with mortgage rates near historic lows means consumer house buying power is more than 150% greater today than it was in January of 2000. Wow. So bottom line is on this topic is if you put off the purchase of a first home or a move up home because of affordability concerns, you should probably take another look at uh, your ability to purchase right. in today's market because you might be pleasantly surprised yeah. that, oh man, like this is actually a good deal and now is the time to buy. Right, right. Um, and I think that kind of debunks that myth as far as you know most people saying, well, you know, it's a great time to sell, but it's not a great time to buy. Uh -huh. um, which yes and no, like, yeah, you're right. Like it is a great time to sell, mm -hmm. but it's also a great time to buy, mm -hmm. right? So I wouldn't necessarily rule out that just because you might pay a little bit more for a house right now that it's not necessarily uh, the worst time to buy. Exactly. Right? So it's, it's a good time to buy if you're thinking about purchasing absolutely something. absolutely yeah and looking into the market I mean I have clients you know who looked at purchasing a house a couple years ago couldn't really find something that fits you know the husband wanted one thing the, the spouse wanted another and it just didn't quite work out they couldn't ever find something that 
you know, the meet in the middle thing and then rates were kind of higher then. So it was one of these things where, hey, let's not sell our current house because we really can't find something. Now we've, you know, circled back around a couple years later, we've refreshed their numbers. They're excited to get back into the purchasing process. Interest rates actually from their last time we did or the original pre-approval that we did have changed almost a full point. Wow. Um, so they're able to actually purchase more of a house and have even a lower payment than what we we're projecting first time around when we did their pre-approval, um, which is absolutely just amazing because that means now they can look at buying a little bit more of a higher quality house yep. and they can find something that, hey, it fits both of their styles a little bit better because they have that flexibility in their purchase price. Yeah, and I think I think one thing that I always tell my clients when we're out looking, you know, like sometimes, for example, they'll be pre-approved for like 175, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll go look and we'll get into a multiple offer situation and we'll actually go up to like 185 mm -hmm. and they're like somewhat freaking out because they're like, oh, that's $10,000 more. Right. How much does that add on to my payment? And I'm like, it's only about 50 bucks. Yeah. And so for every $10,000 as a rule of thumb, if you think about whatever you've been pre-approved for, what your monthly payment is there, um, can you afford to go up another $10,000 for 50 bucks a month? Right. Um, and so sometimes I see like people's eyes and light bulbs go off as far as like, that's it? Because they're like, huh, are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Um, I think they think the $10,000 like, and then they're like, oh, it's, it's gonna only be like 50. Two, $300 yeah. extra a month, you yeah. know? And that's just not the case. Um, so that that's where it pays, I think, to have an experienced, knowledgeable real estate agent and a lender yep. to kind of walk you through that process. Um, and that's why, you know, a lot of times it's, people are always asking me like, you know, how come you only use like Levi or a couple other lenders? Because I trust them and I know that they're knowledgeable in the area that they're in, you right. know, like I'm not just gonna be sending people off to different people um, that I don't really know because I, I want them to be taken care of the way that Levi uh, takes care of people and the way that I take care of my people and that's educating them and informing them along the way um, of what they can afford right. and um, you know, if they can't afford it, then this guy lets me know and says, hey, they've been approved of this amount, but make sure you stay under you know, this amount because that's where they're comfortable at. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important as you're thinking about purchasing the biggest asset of your life, no right? Um, so we wanted to just bring this info to you guys. Um, we know it's been hot topic and something going on on the news and in our market. Um, in Omaha, I mean, we're always booming here in Omaha yeah. and continuing to grow and things are just going up like crazy around us. Yep. Um, inventory is still pretty low but there's plenty of stuff out there on the market. Like yep. it's it's not like it was a year ago. Right. Um, so if you are somebody that's on the fence and you're like, well, where would we stand? You know, what can we get approved for? That kind of thing. Like reach out to this guy, reach out to me, DM us, whatever you have to do. But um, we want to be kind of that resource for you of information and uh, knowledge and education. So even if you're not looking to purchase something or sell something, but you have questions about certain things in the news or on the market or in our industry hit us up always hit us up yep. like it's, Happy it's part of our job we love mm -hmm. so with that being said i'm out hope and you i guys, think this guy's out too hope you guys have a great weekend thanks so much for tuning in let us know if you have any comments questions down below and we will see you next week